Okay, uh, let me know if you can hear me okay. <laughs> or if I'm too loud. Apparently we have one viewer already. Oh, it's probably mad, isn't it? I don't know. I never know anymore. You don't know? Oh, it's me. Hi, Matt. Wicked. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a it's a little irritating. Like I imagine like the watch list for you know big YouTubers is probably insane. For what? Like it's seeing who's watching you rather than who's participating in the chat. Oh yeah, yeah. I wish there was a way to click on like the little doodad there. Well chatting in a in a famous YouTuber stream would be impossible. Yeah. Because everything moves so fast, nobody can have a conversation. Okay, so, um, we're, I guess, just doing patron requests again today. Uh, Ty's computer is still a few days out because we were dummies and read the date wrong. Oh, we read it right. We just forgot about time. <laughs> we were like we're, a whole week yeah, ahead. We were a week off. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, I guess you get to tell me about the draw first because nobody's shown up yet. I mean, you've shown up. That's why you get to tell me what to Never mind. Just tell me what to draw. Oranges, don't worry about it. She's real nuts. Uh, Matt says he was watching a friend stream on Twitch, and his friend was saying that one guy gets north of 100k viewers while he plays Fortnite. Jesus Christ, bananas. Who wants to watch people play a video game that is so accessible for them to play themselves? I don't get it, because these Twitch guys, none of them are funny. None of them are adding anything by talking over the gameplay. So, I, like, I don't understand. I don't understand that part. Because, I mean, I figure the, the first argument would be like, oh, it's because it's the personality of the person doing it. It's like, they're not funny. It's all just desperate comedy that's kind of like a semi-narration of what's happening on screen, just go play the fucking game. It's free. Yeah. It's literally free to go play yourself. Okay. And it runs on an iPhone, so there's no excuse saying you don't have a computer that can run this. I always forget it's a phone game, too. Yeah, Fortnite runs on fucking anything. That's bonkers. Which is part of the brilliance of its design. Like, it's... They're pulling a blizzard where they try to make sure it can run on anything. Uh, Rob, hi! Hi! I'm... Sorry, we didn't see you when you first came in. Uh, also, hello, Rob. <laughs> Rob says he ordered something from Canada and FedEx lost every single one of their Black Friday orders. Da -da -da. Oh, that sucks. Dude. That That is terrible. I, I feel bad, but we did have a postal strike. I'm sure that might have had something to do with it. That sucks. Oh, God. I hope that that gets resolved in a positive way, if not a timely one. Yeah, totally. Nah. We have so few days left till Christmas, that sucks. Uh, and Matt suggested somebody from Smash. Who should I draw from Smash? You're talking about literally any video game character in the history of video game characters? I know, but who should I do? Uh, well, you could draw an endlessly detailed armor of a realistic looking human character, or you could draw Isabel. Uh, or you could get internet points and draw Isabel committing bloody murder. <laughs> I can draw Isabel. Isabel's fun. Isabel. Oh, by the way, Matt, for fun, I tried a, an eight-player match. Just against seven CPUs. Isabel was one of them. 
you'll never guess it was trouncing all the other CPUs. She's that so thing's nuts. Dang cute. Let's draw Isabel. Uh, Matt says, do tell. And <laughs> Rob uh, guessed Daisy. No, no, it was the, I mean, I was, we were talking about Isabel. That was obviously the right answer. Oh. Um. Sorry, me and Matt had a thing going on where we're, we believe that Isabel is either an objectively better slash more broken character or her AI is tuned higher when it's at the same difficulty level as other AIs because she seems to just be a better fighter. I have no way of confirming that is true. It just seems to be true. says that's funny because they just pushed a patch that modified Isabel. So he's not sure if that's still the case, but could still be. Was Isabel confirmed as being like terribly difficult? I'm just pleased that I uh, unlocked everybody before they nerfed the difficulty on unlocking people. I'm rad as shit. As a high rage. Also, yeah, Ty is super good at Smash Brothers. I I'm not. <laughs> Matt says the game on, as a whole is considered to be much more difficult than the last version. That's fine. Uh, switching back to Ganondorf obviously makes the game easier for me. But I really want to try to learn other fighters. Oh, Bayonetta would be tons of fun to draw. She's crazy. She is so weird, gameplay-wise. I'm surprised her ability to stick to walls isn't listed in her moves list. Because some of the characters, if you scroll down, have like extra tips about their like weird play control. And I feel that bears mentioning.
down as angrily. My Isabel's super into kicking ass. Oh, Matt, I also meant to ask you, with the whole, you were mentioning uh, combining spirits. Is that a thing you unlock in adventure mode that is then added to the menu, sort of like dojos? Or is that a thing that I just haven't found yet because the UI is garbage? Sister Isabel is missing her cheating stick. <laughs> I don't find the I don't find the the fishing pole that bad. It's annoying as hell because it, it doesn't allow you to really dash attack her at all. She can just throw the fishing line. Uh, but as long as you can like hop around it, she's pretty much left open. Except I also notice if you get in between her and the the cast fishing line. It can even grab you on its way back to her, which is I did notice that. super irritating. <laughs> oh, I thought summoning was uh, the the Hearthstone thing. I thought it was breaking down your spirits for whatever they call dust in this game, cores, I think, and then using those cores to summon other spirits that just already exist in the game. I didn't realize you could do like combo shit. Wait, so it is like the... So, wait, but I thought in Hearthstone you just you summon cards that just already exist, not like hybrid cards. It would be really neat, but I also understand they don't want to make matches too ridiculously one-sided. I don't really mind. For the most part, I'm not. I'm mostly just into the spirits just to get them all, like the trophies of previous games. I don't really have any interest in using them in normal matches. Amazing. <coughs> so because I'm terrible um, and didn't get you your sketches, I apologize from last week. Uh, I'll just add it to the ones I do today. Yay! Uh, Rob, you're up next. Let's take 16. Yes. I don't know. 
Why do things happen as they do in dreams? It's, it's a big cinematic from Diablo 2. Oh, jeez. It's whatever you've heard me say, I don't know in that way, that I'm referencing the opening cinematic for Diablo 2. <laughs> Why did I follow him? I don't know. Oh. Oh, that's cool. I guess you just need to already know the formulas for that. Whatever. And then they're going to be adding more as new games come out. If the uh, Pikachu and Eevee spirits are any indication. I hate... Just let me buy a video game and then I have all the things that are in that video game. The way video games are all these like... If you don't spend all the extra money and pre-order it from every location, you will never have everything or access to everything that's in that game. It's just frigging exhausting. Just let me have a video game and the things that are in that video game. Someone being hit by fire. Okay. Rob, you're like making into people being struck by things. <laughs> you know? um. Oh, speaking of that, that reminds me, uh, Matt, of another Smash Brothers thing. Is there a secret to Eevee coming out of a Pokeball? Because Eevee doesn't really do anything. And I was wondering, like, if you hit her with elemental attacks, I figured, I was like, oh, it'll trigger, like, a upgrade into that evolution, but it doesn't seem to. So is there like some trick to making Eevee evolve, or is Eevee actually supposed to do nothing? Or do we know anything about that? Because every time she's come out of a Pokeball, she just kind of hops around and disappears. <sighs> oh, I didn't realize that. Um, also, speaking of Pokemon, why did nobody ever tell me about that pink cake bear that's in Smash <laughs> Brothers? Because that's like my new favorite Pokemon. And it fucks shit up every single time it appears. It's wonderful. I love delightful pink cake bear. I don't even want to know the real name. It's just pink cake bear. Pink cake bear. My new favorite pocket bond. I once did a very quick, I guess we'll call it a speed painting, of two guys sitting on a park bench, and one has clearly been like burned to death. It's just like a smoldering <laughs> skeletal corpse. And it just says at the top, LOL, you've been pranked. <laughs> and it's really funny. Who the fuck is that? It's Garson. Oh shit, it's Garson. Hello, Garson. Oh yeah, they have like an hour and a half left. You showed up at a good time. Right now, I am drawing a person on fire. Hello, <laughs> well, you've been pranked.
Oh shit. Matt says it looks like Evie just starts back and forth. Say what? Oh, really? Yeah. That's dumb. I keep telling you Evie's dumb. That's dumb, and you should be able to throw a fireball at her, and then she becomes... Fire Evie. Fire... What's the fire one called? Whatever. Pink cake bear. And fetus bear. Fetus bear. And Mr. Bum Bum. Are my favorite pocket ones. Oh, and also that tiny little bird that just pecks around. Yeah, what is that? I want a team of six of those. That is that little bird. Uh, Matt said Flareon? Flareon? Is the fire Eevee? Right, right. This guy's like, oh god, why? And she's like, yes, burn. Never forget he despair. Oh, Matt. And I say Matt specifically because he's in Canada. Uh, and presumably he's the only one in the chat who's in Canada, so he would know more what I'm talking about. You ever buy those candy canes from Dollarama? Those rainbow ones? I think they're giving me migraines, so I've had to stop buying them, because they are basically sugar that has been poured into the shape of a candy cane and wrapped in some sort of rainbow <laughs> edible plastic. I don't know where I'm going with this. It's just they, they seem to give me excruciating headaches. So from now on, I'm only paying top dollar for candy canes. Matt says the sticks? Well, yes, candy canes are sticks that are like bent at the top. But Dollarama has these rainbow looking ones. He doesn't think he has. They're garbage. Don't ever. It's a cautionary tale, don't do it. Because we're old and we have to actually watch what we're eating now. And give up all the things we love. Matt says, wait, well, you said Dollarama, so no. What, you do good to shop at Dollarama? It's a Canadian institution, you fuck. Oh my god. It's the only place that sells my candy coated marshmallows. Because those are a thing, and I love them. The sketch went to a dark place. Yeah, okay, so we've got... Zelda? I don't know. Sure. A cultist? A dark priestess? Or a priest? How dare I assume it's gendered? <laughs> Matt says he doesn't buy food at Bellarama. <laughs> Wait, are you are you implying that candy canes are food? <laughs> Of course I don't buy food at Dollarama, but I do buy candy. We have bought food at Dollarama before. When? 
I thought we got like spaghetti sauce or something. I would never, even though it is literally the same products with like their third world packaging. Which is why all the they use less colors than the prints and the they use lower quality like paper for the for wrapping cans or whatnot. I thought we did. <laughs> that says it's Zelda using her side tilt plus B. Yeah, that's where she throws the little fire thing. Actually, I haven't played with Zelda yet. Link is a lot of fun. I like playing with Link. Link's fine. I never really like him. Every time they add more heavy characters, Donkey Kong becomes more irrelevant. Because <laughs> every heavy character is better than Donkey Kong. Oh, it's so good, Rob. I'm terrible. I'm really bad, but I, I would like to get good. I, I really want to get good with Wario, but I don't I don't know if that's gonna happen. Dr. Mario is a baller. And infinitely better than Mario Mario because his physics are tighter and instead of Flood, which is fucking useless, he has the classic like spinny thing from the N64 version. What's this lady's problem? Like, why is she setting folks on fire? Because he wouldn't accept the Ori. That's a Stargate. Nobody knows what cut. you're talking about. <laughs> That's what they do to people who don't accept the Ori as gods. What the fuck is that? I have no idea what that is. I don't was. know if the stream can hear that. There's like there's an alarm of some kind. An alien sound is happening right now. Oh, it's somebody's uh, car alarm. It's off now. Great. How's that? Speaking of things, will you grab my shitty phone? Uh, nobody's gonna call on Sunday. You don't know. I know Chris won't. <sighs> Good joke. Chris is my teenage son, and he doesn't call me. Because he's a teenager. Here's aliens decide not to show up when we're streaming. That'd be a lot of fun. Wait, aliens not showing up is a lot of fun? No, I was saying it would be a lot of fun if they did show up. I don't think that would be fun at all. Mm -hmm. I think the, the sudden shock or the established worldview would be 
horrifying. And we would need possibly the rest of our lives to get over it. Enjoy your afternoon. Enjoy your drink. Uh, Rob, that was fun. Good, good request. I, I think, uh, Rage, I think you were the next one to show up. The, ro the weapon I would use if I was an RS decadent. <laughs> yeah, do it. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Um. I should show you guys some of the concept art for other decadents that are in RS. There's a dude who just has a giant golden arm that has like a functional fountain on top. It gets so over the top, it's wonderful. <laughs> All the most anime shit. This is pretty much decadent shit. Oh gosh. Uh... Yeah, Carson wants to see the weapons. Or, like, the other decadent sketches. Well, they're trapped on my dead computer, so... Take a walk. Maybe one day I'll get them. <laughs> Life is garbage. I would have shiny little, like, the jeweled rock picks. Omar's here. Hi, Omar. Oh, shit. One thing I pride this stream for is that shit doesn't appear on screen every time somebody does something. What? Oh, on, like Twitch? On Twitch, Twitch, every aspiring Twitch streamer has it so, like, the screen becomes obscured with bullshit every time a viewer does anything. It's like, don't. <laughs> I came here to watch somebody else play a video game for some reason. I don't need to see text that Luke Skywalker 777 has emoted. 
Omar well, says, please don't. No, I, I, <laughs> it will be a dark day in hell when I even have a face cam. Nobody came here to watch my reaction to my own art. I make terrible faces while I'm drawing, so that will never happen. Well, you just have a terrible face. Oh, eat a butt. Eat every butt. There's yes. three cat butts for me to choose from. Millennials love to eat ass. Oh. <laughs> oh shit, Rob, have fun at D&D. &D. Oh, oh shit. Bye, Rob. Roll me many 20s. I would also have the puppiest pants. Yeah, that I don't get. I think, I think what, if I had to guess, I would imagine that it, it makes the audience members feel good, because it it shows that oh look I I made a difference. There was an interactive element, kind of shallow as it is. Uh, Tyrell's, uh, not that I want to have that piece of shit in this uh, stream, but uh, he has a thing that's like a little pachinko thing. Where whenever anybody like subs to his channel or something, it literally plays like fucking like Plinko at the side of the screen. And so like there's a there's a gamification of you know, setting off a little bells and whistles if you're a viewer. It's it's really, really bizarre. But like if somebody's gonna come to watch me do something, just fucking watch me do something. I get stuff like, you know, putting the currently playing song and stuff in there to just, you know, so that information is there so people don't need to ask. But, like, there's so many, so many people put, like, those giant borders at the side. I mean, a, so they can get their fucking face in there. And B, uh, then they're left with all this extra space so they have to, like, fill it up with garbage. Speedrunners, it makes sense because they often have the, like, the time thing set up. And that's kind of cool. But, like. Most people don't need it. I also get why speedrunners have cams so you can see their fingers, so they're not cheating. Oh, I never considered that. A lot of speedrunners have a camera trained on their hands, so you can literally see what they're doing. Not that I watch a lot of speedruns either, at least not live. I don't usually watch stream speedruns. Oh, yeah, or sponsors, good call. Get some logos in there. We only need Buscemi. Oh, I forgot to put him on. Who's not here. I, I forgot. I noticed. Oh, no. So you got to make those, like, so much shinier and more ornate. Well, they're, they're blue and tiny at the moment. Yeah, I might I might tune in next time uh, Games on Quick does a thing. Because they do a lot of games I am actually interested in. Those are the charity events. They go on for like days, a bunch of speedruns. Oh, yeah. I was also saying, I think I said it in the last stream, I wouldn't mind uh, doing some live streaming of video games if I was doing it for charity. I think that might be a nice way to maybe help people and have fun at the same time. Because if I'm going to be playing video games anyways, like, sure, fine, I'll play it in front of an audience, but you're going to have to fucking pay. Pay for a charity to come watch. And even then, I'm not going to be playing anything made after 1996, so have fun with that. You know, watch me play Bubble Bobble. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a Mac coming, I thought, last Friday, but we were stupid, and it actually said this coming Friday, and both of us just didn't notice. So, uh, sometime this week I should have a new computer. But, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel awful that I'm just, by the time I get a computer, I will have not been doing art for, like, two weeks. And I was rusty before my computer broke. So my, uh, my self-confidence is kind of in that shitter right now. Oh, does Extra Life do that? Like, can, do they, 
partner with streamers to do shit for that because I would love to do that. That'd be great. I also want like control over where the money's going, though. Not that not that extra life doesn't have worthwhile charities, but like I don't know. I'd also like to be able to select. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm I'm sure that's also true, Omar. I'm sure I will uh, bounce back into form quickly, uh, assuming that it is an eleven. But it is a max, so there is a far greater chance it will just be perfect for ten years. Who knows? Oh, every year? No, fuck that. I just mean like whenever I want, I'll just stream, drop a check off at whatever place. And maybe do it again next week. Fuck annual shit. You can help people all year round. Just realized I need bling. You don't need bling. You could just be a shitty beckoner. I would be a shitty beckoner. I I would fit in better at Rasaran. <laughs> Hanging out in badly matched patterns. Oh, you know what we need? You know what we need for a decade? We need a guy who just has boots. Just retarded, incredible cowboy boots with, like, wicked-ass spurs on the back. Oh, my goodness. They're just, like, crazy, like, blades. I have never seen that video. What? What? Never seen it. I don't think I've seen Tacky. No, maybe I have. Oh my god, that was a long time ago. I've been... I'm, I'm very familiar with Weird Al's output pre-bad hair day. And then Bad Hair Day is when I started not paying attention. Like like Amish Paradise, I'm not very familiar with that song because by then I wasn't really paying attention to Weird Al anymore. But like his really old shit, like uh, like I Lost on Jeopardy, uh, the Brady Bunch, which was his parody of the Safety Dance, like shit like that. Like I I I can recite all that shit word for word. Yeah, I figured that's what it was. How much Paradise was like my jam. That's the one everybody knows, and I, I felt weird, like because even at the time, when I was in like what grade like four or five, like everybody was singing the song. I was like, hey. you know, I don't know. I really liked White and Nerdy. I thought that was funny. Yeah, I think I heard that song one time, and I'm 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 uh, absolutely his ability to stay on topic and parody a song, a rap song, syllable for syllable, cannot be overstated. It's incredible. His ability to like write a song over top of another song. It's pretty great. I was like, yeah, Rage Third. Yeah, buy me a condo. That one's in my head all the time. That's one of those really old songs. Uh, it's, it's like a reggae tune. I forget what it's a... Uh, uh, parody of. It's great. It's about a Jamaican guy who just wants to live the American dream and give up his like nice life in Jamaica for like the stress of of the U.S. It's great. Word crimes. Word crimes was so good. The video is so good too. Mm -hmm. It's it's just words moving into each other and whatnot. It's oh, kinetic typography. I hate that shit. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's really good. I don't like, it's artistically done. It's I don't like kinetic typography. Um, uh, Carson, it's your turn. Also, Rage, yes, they're tiny little bejeweled fossil hammers.
Oh, Rage is ninja vanishing. Shit. Ninja. Thanks for showing up, though, man. Yeah, thank you for coming. I'll add that sketch to the sketch that I already owe you. The I'm growing old. pile. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's been hard for me to set up the computer for the past couple of days. Yeah, did we tell you about Jen's knee? Did we tell everybody about Jen's knee? I, I mentioned it in a tweet. Jen fucked her knee up. <laughs> it's, there's some snow on the ground still. And when we had to go talk to our lawyer about my immigration shit. By the way, news on that. Um, we had to step off, off the sidewalk to go around some dudes that were doing maintenance. And the very first fucking step. I put in the grass, I just, I fell, I slipped so hard, and I banged one knee real, real bad, and the other leg was kind of splayed out in front of me, so I couldn't get up. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, uh, grass slush got me. And, uh, my knee is bruised and a bit swollen, and it feels squishy, but otherwise it's getting better, so that's good. Anyway, uh, sitting at my desk, it makes me bend my knees, so uh, it's unpleasant. That's my story. Oh, immigration stuff, though. Uh, our lawyer has made a new package for me and is going to send it to the person that reviewed our package in the first place for reconsideration. So a few months from now, hopefully Canada will be like, yeah, you're cool. Yeah, thank you, Omar. <laughs> yeah, if any of you ever have to go through like permanent residency shit in another country, work with somebody. You can't do it on your own. Yeah, don't don't do what we did and not seek actual legal advice. Like we we saw it. People who are adjacent to actual legal advice, because I mean, we're poor as shit. We obviously can't afford a quote unquote real lawyer. Uh, but we worked with people who should have known what they were talking about, but it turns out didn't in like one key area and it threw everything off track. Uh, but we've corrected that now and we believe that we can force them to look at it again and be like, oh, okay, yeah, no, you're fine. So. But yeah, if you can get legal advice, do it, and do it right the first time. Sorry, what's this Pikachu about? I don't know, just trying Pikachu. Fine. Oh, I got the name of that not Raichu the other day, but I've forgotten it again because Pokemon are named stupid things. Man, this looks like Gen 1 Pikachu when it was a potato sack. I don't remember what his ears do. Uh, they're they're flop. They're actually kind of like silk ears. They're floppy, like they're skinny and they're kind of like pointy football shapes. So they they kind of pinch in where they connect to his head a little bit. And one is usually flopped over. <clears throat> we'll go with this. No, uh, it's this other one. It's in Smash Brothers, and you pop the Pokeball, and it's it looks like a Raichu. It's like an orange mouse thing, and it's electric, but it's clearly not a Raichu because it doesn't have the tail. And I finally figured out what his name was, and then it, it passed because I don't think I cared that much. Oh, that's true. I do. I do like the little hearts. 
The little heart shapes. I love the, I assume this is a reference to the show or something, but one of Pikachu's alternate costumes in in Smash Brothers is a female luchador Pikachu. It's so cute. Which is so weirdly left field, but I love it. And I I fail to understand why Detective Pikachu is not one of the alternate costumes. Unless somehow Nintendo doesn't have the rights to Detective Pikachu. Because the Pokemon company is technically a separate entity. And so it can sometimes do what it wants, which is why every Pokemon game that isn't a Nintendo jam has disgusting monetization in it. Uh, also, Matt seems to... No, I'm not, because it didn't have the tail. No, there's, there's an orange... Alolan Raichu is in, is in Smash. But there's another Pokemon that is an orange, mouse-shaped, electric Pokemon that is dangerously close to a Raichu, but is not, because it doesn't have the tail. And it makes like this like nova of electricity around it. <laughs> I love this Pikachu. This is my favorite one. Daddy? Is that how you say that? Uh, dead, dead, N? Dead, N, dead. Sure. D, D, den. I honestly don't know, but it was very close to Raichu and wasn't. Carson, are you still with us? Because it's your turn. Tell me what to draw. Kev and Uncle Iroh drinking tea together. <laughs> yeah, do it! <laughs> That's amazing. Hold on, I gotta get reference for Iroh. Oh my god, I want to watch Avatar again. I wrote the best. How far into Korra are you right now?
Oh, nice. Uh, I think season three is definitely my favorite of the bunch. I, I should probably watch it again. Shit, I've been on Colby's tail this whole time. Oh, she seems okay. Yeah, no, she's fine. Uh, speaking of kitties, she did. Ah, it's too early. But he's well. I mean, it's also been a nice day, so he probably won't show up. Very he's late. probably still sleeping. It's only four o'clock. We got like half an hour first. I'm so into this. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've drawn my group. Jesus, the laundry room sounds violent today. Our bedroom is right next to this building laundry room. So if somebody puts their clothes in the washer that's closest to our bed, we can hear it through the wall. <laughs> yeah, given the kind of comic we're doing, you'd think we'd want like an Iroh character. But there kinda isn't one. No. There kinda isn't gonna be somebody that lovable in in Rising Sam. to make Kev bigger. <laughs> yeah, he is like 8'3". That's better. <laughs> well, I'm the father. Um... No, I wouldn't say he's Iroh like. Oh, certainly not. No. No. No, uh, uh, Doll's dad is one of the reasons Doll left home. No, without giving too much away, uh, Doll's dad is one of those, like, uh, I know what's best for my kids, so obviously they're just gonna do that, and I've never even considered their own wants and needs. And then Doll's mom was like never there. 
So that's there's that. We get into that more later. Don't worry about it. But uh, she's arguably even shittier as a parent. This is adorable and Twitter must see. I actually drew a, a really cute sketch. Is it last night? Is that last night? Night before? Night before last. Um, that will throw up on Patreon for you guys. Um, Sorry, you do what? That sketch I did of Leal. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fun. That's also like, a, like, character history that may never actually be fully gotten into. Yeah. Because I don't know if it's required for the story.
Good grief. Sorry, that's the Twitters were calling. The Tweeters. Actually, I would say that, well, well, certainly not Ira levels. Uh, uh, Kev or Sorrel are, I don't know, Ira like. I mean, I guess after Kev. <laughs> After, after Kev's uh, recent actions, maybe not. Uh, I guess if we're going for lovable character, it, it, would, it would be Sorrel. Well, yeah, no, but I mean, it's not like Sorrel's, uh, you know, a, a wise man who has all who has long since come to, you know, understand uh, his his you know desires or lack thereof. No. Charles a wannabe gangster who just loved to cook and sew. <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Kev doesn't look it, but he's actually really enjoying Iroh's company. You don't need to smile to enjoy things. It's just nice to spend time with somebody who is spitting out the tea. <laughs> Because Dahl would spit out the tea. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, Omar, it's your turn. And yay, Tyson, I'm glad you like this. I drew Iro. Once. It's somewhere. Somewhere in stacks and stacks of sketchbooks. I, think I don't I remember that. I don't even know what you've seen. Really? Where is everyone? Oh. There's another. Who cares? <laughs> Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Luigi. I'm just gonna laugh along while I understand what's going on. Okay, I, I'm lying when I say I don't know anything that happens in Harry Potter. I know Snape kills Dumbledore because that was a meme for a while. Yeah. But I don't understand the context surrounding that. Oh. Oh. Going deep. Oh, Marsh County spoilers. Okay, so the context here is that Luigi, Harry Potter, is actually Ron. So I need to draw Luigi as Ron. That's doable. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to describe Harry Potter's 
like, weird, timid sidekick, who I've been told is Ron. <laughs> no, so it's, it's Harry Potter and Ron Swanson, right? Oh my god. <laughs> I wish could happen. Uh, no, actually, Weasley. <laughs> magic is for communists and hippies. And he's a wizard, but he refuses to do any magic. <laughs> uh, God, I want to watch Parks and Rec now. Holy not shit. on Netflix, so shut up. Nope, not on Netflix. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. I like Brooklyn Nine-Nine more. Yeah, though. me too. Yeah. Like, Parks and Rec is, a, is an excellent show, but there's like... God, it's there's something like that's like 5% too saccharine about it. <laughs> Where like, it's it's just... It's tweeness allows Brooklyn Nine-Nine to, to beat it for me. And I don't recall, and maybe it did, but I don't recall uh, Parks and Rec having the balls to tackle some of the stuff that Brooklyn Nine-Nine does. No. Yeah. Okay, so Ron's got this huge sweater. Not that the show should be shamed for that. It's just I'm, I'm always amazed when Brooklyn Nine-Nine has like a message episode. Because they, they handle it so well. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely one of the shows, uh, to Carson uh, responding to her, it's, it's definitely one of the shows that, like, I kind of just play it forever on repeat on Netflix. Because <laughs> at this point, I've watched all the Star Trek so many times that it's just kind of whatever, man. You know what I really like to do now that uh, my computer, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it almost strictly a work machine. I would love to... Uh, get a second Raspberry Pi and just install uh, uh, what's it called? what do they call XBMC now? Cody? I think it's Cody now. Just install that on it and have a, a, an external drive with shit on it. And we can just I don't even need to turn on Netflix. I can just watch my Star Treks in a random order. So it's like Spike TV when Spike TV first started. It was just Eight hours of Star Trek, oh, and then God. like the one or two Spike shows that they've been able to afford in the very beginning. Let's see, the Potter kids have these little wizard hats. Oh, is Gina like gone, gone in the new season? I didn't know that. For real? Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, I don't find. Chelsea Peretti's comedy funny at all because that that is just her like the the character she plays on B99 like that is what her comedy is and like I, I hate it but she was also a really really great foil to everyone on the show yeah like even even when she was gone for a bit well she was like doing the whole baby thing like I missed her. <clears throat> oh, uh... This is, this is not working. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, well, TNG, for sure. Uh, I don't think it's imperative that you watch the first two seasons when they're wearing like the weird spandex bodysuits. Uh, oh, Omar kind of hit it. Started at episode 15. Yeah, I think you yeah, can, I think right. you can skip if, if you, if you don't care about completion, I think you can probably skip the first little bit of TNG. Well, it like finds its legs. Uh, it starts to get undeniably legit good at season three. Uh, but there is some good stuff in season two as well. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely start with TNG. I think TNG is, is, 
I want to say the most important Star Trek. It's it's like the perfect balance of of there's still heavy allegorical shit and it's still like tackling social issues that and, and it's still relevant today. Uh, but it's also it has a real sense of fun, I guess. I mean, that's why uh, the Orville apparently has gone from uh, lame Seth MacFarlane comedy, and it is basically just TNG now. And apparently, Discovery is taking cues from the Orville for season two. So Seth MacFarlane was literally like, Star Trek sucks now, so I'm going to make my own Star Trek and show you how Star Trek is done. And then Star Trek was like, oh, and now they're trying to like make it more like Star Trek. So that's fun. But yeah, the, the trailer for season two of Discovery, like, it was like all comedy. It was really, really bizarre. But like it felt it felt closer to Star Trek than the fucking screaming hell trek that was season one of Discovery. Jesus Christ. There's so little joy in that show. Isn't there an early season three that's really good too? Who watches The Watchers? I forget which episode that is of season three. But that's the one where, uh, where they they're they're spying on those not Vulcans, and then they get found out, and they accidentally cause the Vulcans to believe in God. That's a fucking excellent episode. I'm pretty sure that's earlier in season three. Do they actually wear those hats in Harry Potter? They do in the books. They were like stupid little like dunce caps. They're they do in the books. Holy shit. And I think... Oh, God. No, I don't... No, no, they do have... Do they have money? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I don't know anything about Harry Potter. It's been a long time. Like, this looks like fucking, like, like stage play renditions of Pinocchio. Holy oh, shit. Uh, yeah, getting back to Star Trek, though. Uh, TNG... Uh, Yes, maybe skip the first little bit. And then if you really, really enjoy it, I would suggest watching all of it, just if you want more. Uh, DS9 is oh, so good. extremely good, and it has also kind of laid the groundwork for all modern television. Like, it was the first, it was pretty much the first show to do the kind of grand, sweeping, multi-season arcs that, that pretty much every show does now. Uh, and it's got lots of wonderful... Uh, like morally gray, complex characters. Uh, that's one you'd kind of want to watch the whole thing because it is such a, for the most part, a single storyline. Uh, Voyager, your mileage will vary. Mo Voyager, I suggest watching it because it's kind of like a an expansion pack to TNG if you just kind of want more single episode fun sci-fi mysteries. Uh, Fully half the cast is not worth it at all. Uh, a lot of characters are superfluous and shouldn't be on the show. But it also has Tuvok. Tuvok is amazing. And Tuvok is possibly my favorite Star Trek character. Uh, and Janeway is good. I like Janeway a lot. Uh, Janeway is great, but she's a terrible captain. Yeah, but given the extraordinary circumstances of the mission... Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah. She kind of has to be less of a captain and more like a like, full-time, let's keep everybody from killing themselves. Yeah. Uh, Enterprise is dog shit. And only watch Enterprise if you absolutely need more Star Trek. Which is what we did. Uh, mm -hmm. There are, like, it sucks, because Enterprise has, like, four or five episodes that are, like, some of the best Star Trek. Uh, like, the one... Uh, that one that's obviously like a trans thing, sort of, with oh, that where yeah. with that, that species that has the third gender. Yeah. And then like the ending is just dark as hell. Uh, that's an excellent episode, but unfortunately it's Enterprise. Uh, and then the original Star Trek. That's true. The, the Doctor is like a full character in Voyager. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. The Doctor's really good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Janeway, Janeway, the Doctor, Tuvok. And then Neelix as a foil to Tuvok. It, like, their relationship is really good. Neelix is incredibly annoying, but the way he interacts with other characters is good. And I mean, obviously Seven of Nine is, is okay as well. 
but I don't like how the entire show revolved around her once she was there. Yeah. Um, and, and then TOS, going back to the original Star Trek, I would need to build you a playlist of exactly which episodes to watch <laughs> because a lot of them are stupid crap. But TOS is also interesting too because it invented a lot of the tropes you've seen in parody form ever since. Like, uh, like, so much of what we identify as just, like, bog-standard science fiction was done for the first time in TOS. So almost just as, like, a historic thing, you, you almost want to watch through that as well. Now. And then Discovery today may be the most watchable one, but it is the least Star Trek. It's fun. It's just, it doesn't really support the pillars that Star Trek is classically about. The Darkest Timeline episode? Which one's that? Oh, you mean Mirror Universe. We call it the Mirror Universe because all the episodes later that focus on the Mirror Universe are always references to mirrors. You mean the goatee, Spock Beard Universe. Yeah, that's good. In DS9, like... It's like a whole thing. Like, they go back and forth all the time in the very universe. And then, not to spoil Discovery, but there's a bit of it in that as well. That was the best episode. Best episode? The whole thing became about that. Discovery? The first one. Like, not, no, excuse me, it wasn't your universe. It was uh, time jumping. That was what I was talking about. Sorry. Time jumping? Yeah. It was like the one episode of Discovery that was... Joyful in any kind of way. Oh, yeah, the, the Harry Mudd episode. Yes, yeah. That one fucking ruled. That, that was so good. Far, and it's funny, too. The only reason that episode exists was because they had no budget for that episode. Mm -hmm. And so they were just like, okay, bottle episode, Harry Mudd takes over the ship. And it was easily the best episode of Discovery. Like, it was by far is total Star Trek in that episode. Where it's not taking itself too seriously. It just has like a weird puzzle they have to figure out. And it's just a one and done. And it's it's awesome. It's great. For that reason, I also kind of like that one where they went to that planet. And there was that... Uh, it was that away mission one where there's that like crystal tower. Yeah, that was... That they have to venture to. And it's like... That was really good. It was like a self contained It felt like a Star Trek episode where like there was just this weird shit happening on this planet. And they had to figure it out. Okay, so there's Luigi Harry Potter. I'm gonna love these movies. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I, based on a tweet. Or I guess based on a thing I said in real life. Ron's mom makes all her kids and Harry uh, sweaters with their first initials on them. So Louis G. would have an L shirt. Oh, shit. Oh, uh... <laughs> Alright, let's go through the movies. Uh, first one, too long. Second one, uh, overrated. Third one, this is good. Fourth is the best. Uh, five... Which one's fourth? Whales. Okay. It's the best one. No, uh, we agree. Five. I always get five and six mixed up. What's is the fifth one? The one where they meet God. Is I it, thought that was the one. That's like ones. Spock's brother hijacks the ship and they meet God. Yeah. That one's whatever. Uh, six. Is. I, know, I can't remember. Is it good? I actually haven't seen six in a long enough time. Uh, okay, now we're on to TNG. Generations uh, is bad. Don't uh, even Generation, play no, Generations. Generations is bad. Generations is terrible. Oh. Uh, Insurrection would be a good episode of TNG, but is way too long for what it is. Uh, and Nemesis is a piece of shit. JJ uh, Abrams Star Trek number one is. I love that. Movie. It's fun. Yeah, it's I... it, it's starting. It's it's not it, it, like Discovery. It's not really. It's barely a Star Trek. No, it's, it's Marvel it's, track. Yeah, it feels it feels like an action blockbuster, but it is a lot of fun. I like it. 
for what it is. Um, I love that movie. Uh, Into Darkness is garbage. It's pretty terrible. And uh, whatever Beyond gets a little better. But it's, it's better than, yeah. It's not as good as the first day of the no. show. I'm going to get food for Monty. And that is the Star Trek movies. Oh, I don't, I don't remember. Six, six is the one where their signatures are in the credits, and I thought that was a cute goodbye. And then three of them show up in the next movie. Uh, I forget what happens in that movie though. Five, they meet God. So what happens in the sixth one? How do you top that? No, that's the one with where uh, David Warner is the Klingon in Six, right? And there's like a assassination plot or something. I don't know. The fucking captains are on trial so goddamn often in Star Trek. God, I can't remember. Whales is definitely the best one. Jen's getting a uh, food for money, so I guess I'll just doodle on this terrible setup that I suck at again. Oh, no. That's not how we do it. <sighs> Jesus Christ. This Picard. I'm drawing a, I'm drawing a John Luke Picard. He's like, yes, make it so. If you please, Mr. Crosshide. He's got the he's got the chair. He's, he's got the chair. Oh yeah, that's the prison planet one where Iman is a shape changing lady. Forgot about that. Pretty sure Picard crosses his legs sometimes. Oh yeah, that's where they have the guy with the balls on his on his yeah, I think you're right. Or his balls are on like his knees or something like that. It's some weird shit. I don't really know how to draw a ranker off the top of my head. Riker hasn't shaved in a while. He really does sit like this in some episodes. On his little, like, baby stool. That's next to Picard's chair. And I, I don't know shit about how to draw Deanna. Dressed very inappropriately for work because this was 1987. I do like they eventually gave her a uniform. And then you got the big wooden arc thing behind them. And then. And then Worf is up here. Look, I'm drawing the bridge of the Enterprise D. And he has his, like, bizarre, I want to speak to the manager hair for the first, actually the whole show. It isn't until DS9 he gets the ponytail. Yeah, the ponytail's the best part. He just has beautiful hair. He just has his arms. This is great. 
I'm great. That Picard is actually pretty perfect. <laughs> and then and then Data sits up at the front. You can tell it's Data because he's got a square head because he's a robot. Oh yeah, no, you're right. He does. He does have the the bike chain thing. I forgot about that. Our gray squirrel was coming up to me, but but then Leo spooked him. So oh, that I, sucks. I had to throw peanuts at him. What do you want? There's a train of cats in here now. Dave's like, but sir, the pulsar is too big. The pulsar is too big. And they've got those weird things, and they have the chairs that they kind of like slouch back in. Which I think they got rid of in later seasons. And then Wesley is just a little baby. With super Game Boy logo hair. This is brilliant. I guess we should put Jordy and Crusher in there as well. The forge is like, yes, yes to reading. His legs are kind of weird. That's that's all. That's kind of weird. I I do not know how to draw Gates McFadden. She's got like a bird nose. Maybe she's just a bird. <laughs> then she kind of has more hair, except it's red. And I'm pretty sure she has like fringy bangs. Yeah. For the first little while. And then she wears that fucking, like, hospital green trench coat. I like her <laughs> costume. Oh, no, it's great. And I like that they use it to differentiate the... Sort of like how, like, uh, that in Voyager, how Bolana has the hide the pregnancy... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, jacket full of, like, tools and shit. I actually thought that was a nice, like, costume thing. And then she's, she's got a hypo spray, which, for the purposes of clarity, will just be... A syringe. It's better than Troy's outfit for the first long time. I want to post this on Twitter later, so you should give me this. Okay. I don't. I don't remember how the font goes, so I'm just kind of winging it. Right, next generation, not just the generation. Oh, Q, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's got those John, lips. John Delancey has such beautiful lips. I, I don't remember how John... John Delancey has, like, really curly hair, right? It's, it's short, yeah. Oh shit, we need Guinan as well, obviously. And Q's like, with a snap of my fingers. <laughs> kind of looks like he's just the Ronald McDonald from The Milk. <laughs> Give him like that A-OK. -okay. Jesus. <laughs> and she's, this is gonna, God, this is almost gonna look racist. Not like, 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 because she's always, she's always like tenting her fingers and shit. I've done it. I feel like we're forgetting somebody. No, because we have the, we have the main, we have the main seven, and then Wesley, and then Guinan, and then, and then Q. 
It's pretty much everybody. Okay. Like Nurse Ogawa, Dr. Salar. Oh, Brian. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Cole Meany. Okay. Uh, we almost forgot O'Brien. See, we can't do... We can't do... Uh, like, DS9 O'Brien, who just has, like, a baloney face. Because he's, like, super young in TNG. So he has this, like, upside-down... But he still has, like, the, the really gross, patchy, curly hair. He's trying to pass. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's all you get. The Zobrian. <laughs> He's supposed to be in transporter room three. Why is he on the bridge? Nobody He's knows. Inside, I didn't say. I'm not drawing Keiko though. Neat. Uh, all right. Thanks for playing, everyone. <laughs> this am great. Oh, fucking Christ, Alexander Rojenko. I, I refuse not to... You know why Alexander kept being in the show? Uh, Gene Roddenberry's mom thought he was the best character. And because Gene Roddenberry's... Dick. Uh, Alexander just kept being on the show. He was okay once he got a little older. I, got, I liked him in the Cowboy episode. That was a different actor. Yeah. Like he's saying the character. They kept upgrading older. the actor a little bit. I still like him best on DS9, where he has suddenly mysteriously just become like 20. Yeah. And he's just that awkward, bumbling idiot. He's kind of Luigi like. And DS9. Yeah. Oh, Spot! We need to do Spot! Good, good cat. It's Spot who has stripes. Because I'm pretty sure Spot has stripes. Yeah, he's, he's an orange cat. It's also a she. It, 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 magic, right. it yeah. magically becomes a female the next time it's in an episode because it has kittens. They're not perfectly consistent in Star Trek. I should probably draw the rest of his bulk. Because <laughs> Riker is an enormous man. <laughs> and we're lucky enough to get a a movie deal on Rising Sand. I'm gonna force Jonathan Frakes to be in it. <laughs> and be like, you ever wanna see your wife? You'll be on my shitty movie. My shitty movie that is practically a remake of Mortal Kombat. Jordy looks like he's flipping off Troy. Probably is. Jordy wouldn't do that. Would he though? Cause he's the one who's like, yeah, we should just let Q die. Like, Jordy is always considered, like, the one who, who is, like, he can get along with anybody. But, like, he also literally advocates just letting the Cattle Moran kill Q in the episode where Q was human. He's just like, who gives a shit? Just do it. Well, Q is awful. So yeah, Q is awful, but Jordy is the person, he's, like, the last person to suggest okay. taking a life. He would kill off Q, but I don't think he would flip off Troy. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> oh, I guess we gotta get Deanna's, like, Greek eyebrows in there. There. This is perfect. <laughs> I wish Riker was doing his, his leg up thing. Well, he only does that when he's down at Data's console. That's true. Where he's like, Data, look at my penis. <laughs> I'll give this back to you now. I don't want Anymore. I'll give this back it. to you. There's 15 minutes left. Draw, save us. Save us from this. That was a terrible sound. Yes, it was. Do I see the <clears> Matthews there yet? Yes, I do. It's so bright out, though. Yeah, he's not here yet. 
Oh my god, did everybody leave us? Is it just you, Matt? Ouch. Wait, how many are watching? No, it's three. <laughs> the others are just dumbfounded by my beautiful artwork. <clears throat> Next week, hopefully, I will be able to stream from my own computer. You see, no more's here. And I, I presume Carson is also here because the other two were Rach and Rob. Right. Yes, it is. It's glorious. Oh my god, that Q is my favorite. I love how easily <laughs> identifiable both Q and O'Brien are. I was worried they wouldn't be, <laughs> but they're possibly the closest to the real people. <laughs> I have a whole page of O'Brien's that I was going to post up for uh, uh, Throwback Thursday one day, but for some reason I kept putting it off, and now I don't have a computer, so that's... You could probably find it online, though. Surely you've shared some of your O'Brien's before. Probably, yeah. Man, I used to knit. Very briefly in college, I knit. I, I didn't get very far. I am so clueless when it comes to <clears throat> knitting. I don't get it. I can sew a little bit. My knitting needles are somewhere. They are translucent neon orange. That's amazing. Yeah. If I got them now, they'd probably just be gold. Holy shit. What are you guys doing? Fighting. Okay, bye. Having a cats. double fight. Why doesn't everybody just fuck up? Pete PD Piranha? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's the worst Mario character. Uh, but they keep putting him in games because Nintendo likes to just force characters on you. What is PD Piranha? Oh, you'll love it. Oh. He's a prom plant wearing a diaper. Okay. Oh, okay. I can have fun with this. Let's do this. Stop it, Google. Do as you're told. Here we go. <coughs> Kitty Piranha. <laughs> what games? Uh, I think the first one he was in was Mario Sunshine. Oh. And there has been a reference to him in almost every Mario game since. He was a boss in like every Smash Brothers. I, I'm so, this is like the first Smash no. Brothers that I've... Yeah. I, I don't think he's actually in this one, interestingly enough. Though I do not doubt for a second uh, you can unlock a probably overly powerful spirit of him. PD Piranha. He's got those amazing lips. <laughs> oh no. Is that someone Piranha Plant? If Piranha Plant hulks out into PD Piranha, that's pretty fucking awesome. I, uh, one of the very first things I did upon uh, downloading Smash Brothers was turned Final Smashes off. So I have seen about three to date. Just because when you play like Spirit Mode and stuff, they're often still on. No, that's fun then. If it's kind of like a, like he literally Jekyll and Hyde's into PD Piranha, that's kind of fun. Yeah, I'm still. St God. 
I was a Sega kid, so I don't have a lot of experience with Nintendo stuff. And, uh, so, like, since moving here, that has been a crash course in Nintendo for me. And I'm still not very familiar with a lot of stuff. I'm so happy to have met PD Piranha this night. He wears a diaper. I see. Pretty sure he's a driver in Mario Kart Double Dash. Really? The GameCube one. So if you played that one, presumably you had him. Because I'm pretty sure his partner. I did. I did have a GameCube, but I only ever played Mario Kart when. Uh, we got together with Corey, so, um, like, it, I don't remember a lot of it. Well, who? Pretty sure the first time I saw him was in Mario Galaxy, but I think it was like a variation where he was like a dinosaur piranha plant, but it was essentially the same character. So kind of like what I'm drawing now. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically. Where the fuck is Monty? It's not even five yet. Who cares? It's still kind of bright out. Not really. This is definitely around the, the brightness where he shows up. I think he showed up at about 10 after last night. All the squirrels have safely treed. diaper so much as like a speedo whatever it's, it's, it's a bit of a bulge the point is this is a plant with a sense of modesty and that's silly oh yeah yeah that's uh he wasn't double dash oh. along with i think his partner was boo And then he was a car in Mario Kart Wii. I remember that. I had a Wii, I just never played it much. <clears throat> God damn, were we all enamored by motion controls for a little while. Just gathering in great house parties just to play, like, tennis. <laughs> and then in our house it was Wario where smooth moves which was so much fun when you get like eight people standing around playing that thing god I want that it might be one of my favorite games just for the sheer okay give me a moment I will write that down <laughs> I only get half of that joke, the Ron Swanson half, oh, but no. I'm sure that'd be fun. That is so perfect. Holy shit. <laughs> is this another Harry Potter joke? Yeah. I, and that eye's great. I think you'll like him. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, um... We'll see.
This is a first for me. Never drawn a bulge on a plant before. Plant it. Get that plant it. Why are you drawing a bulge on a plant? Because he's wearing little speedos. I think you're just a gross. Oh, Omar, no, yeah, he's, he, he's in for a treat. What? Omar was just confirming that you've never read any of the books or seen the movies. Yeah, I, I have no idea what Harry Potter is. No, if I'm being, if I'm being completely honest, I did go with a friend to see the third movie in theaters. But my eyes just kind of glazed over because I had no context. Uh, I had no idea what was happening. Uh, and honestly, at this point, because it was such, it was a fragment of something that I didn't understand or care about, like it, it faded from memory. So like, I, I don't know, I don't remember what I saw or why it was important. I didn't understand what was happening or how that fed into what it came before or what would come after. It was just whatever. That was also the wrong movie to start anybody off in watching. Yeah. It's, That's what I've been It's told. so good. It's so good, but it's so freaking weird. Yeah, everybody says the third one's the best one, and knowing what director it is, I'm sure that will be the best one. I really like it. Like, there's like no the doubt one. in my mind that, yes, of course, that will be the best one. He's got nipples. Yes. Nipples and dicks. Plant dicks. He's so beautiful. Where's that fucking cat? Uh, I don't want another one of those nights where Monty's late. Yeah. I, I don't like worrying that this cat is dead in a ditch. Mm. It's glorious. I've done a glorious thing here. It's fine. Oh yeah. Oh Tumblr. Is that what is, what day is it? Is that tomorrow that everything falls apart? Uh, yes it is. Uh, yeah. Yep. As far as I can tell, Sorrel's feet are okay again, so Yeah, it seems that they toned down the embarrassing algorithm. And suddenly our stuff was not flagged. And, as a result, it seems, uh, page 18 is back where it should be. So, it seems that, for the moment, we uh, can continue to recommend that people read the comic, because it is in the proper order. Still, though, going to make a new website. Yeah, I would like to have our own website. And, uh, <laughs> Move to that. Maybe we'll even have comments. I'd be okay with that. Though I'd still really rather just have a Discord. And people can just... Technically, there is a Rising Sand Discord. We just haven't opened it to the public because I'm old. And uh, <laughs> don't really understand how to set it up properly just yet. No, I'm see Omar, I'm with you. I don't like comments on web comics because I think that, see, there's this thing that almost every web comic in the world does where when they post a page, the author will be, will undercut any emotional impact with like a stupid comment because they're, they're self-conscious about their work where like there'll be a character crying or a solemn death scene or something. And like the author will be like, huh, why, why so sad? And it's like, what the fuck are you doing? This is an emotional moment. Shut the hell up. Like, you worked really hard on this emotional moment. Just let it breathe. And and comments, I think, serve essentially the same purpose, where other people get a chance to ruin moments. Uh, I still think that people should be able to talk about the comic. I just, I, I've personally never really given a shit whether or not we have comments. This one is pro-comments, though. 
I like comments because it builds a community. People can talk with each other about what's going on in the pages. They Wait, Carson's leaving. Carson, thank you for showing up. Oh, shit. Bye, Carson. You're great. Okay, I love you. Bye. <laughs> uh, I hate Reddit a lot, and it's pretty much overrun with Nazis and shit now, so no Reddit. Uh, <clears throat> but Discord prob that seems to be what webcomics do now, is that they just have a Discord. And since I already use Discord, that sounds like a cool idea. I don't join any public Discords. I tried. I've joined the, the webcomic Discord for, for several comics now, and I always end up leaving because, first of all, pretty much every webcomic Discord is a bunch of teenagers trying to impress each other. Uh, and then somebody spams the at everybody button over and over and over and over again until I can't stand it and I leave. And that's my experience with every webcomic Discord. However, uh, hopefully ours would be better than that. <laughs> I'd like to think our fans are sophisticated. He says, well, I'm drawing Piranha Pete. Piranha Peter. Don't. Don't prove me wrong. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, well, it's 5.02, and my knee is killing, and Ty just broke his phone. Oh, it happens all the time. Is it good? Yeah. My phone is indestructible. What are you talking about? <laughs> my phone is incredibly old in that it, it literally falls apart in my hand. Uh, it, is, it is in shambles. It is terrible. But no matter how much I drop it, the screen never breaks. It just keeps working. He'll put it in his pocket, and change will work itself in between, like, the cover and the phone itself. Yeah, I sometimes can't find my debit card because it's inside my phone. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, it chipped this time. Oh, it chipped. Does that the mean, the does back that, chipped, though, not the front. Is that, does that mean it's time for a new one? Nope. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just bought a new computer. I don't need a new phone. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, it's chipped in two places. Like, it is It is at the point uh, <clears throat> where I have to start considering duct tape. <laughs> I'm just at the point where I should probably consider duct tape as an option. Um, my phone's about five years old as well, and it's hanging in there. There's been no major issues with it. Yeah, mine's a Galaxy Note 2 from 2012. Mine's a S5 Sam Samsung. Phones aren't even supposed to survive for this long. And the best part is, when this one breaks, T had one as well. So I can just put my SIM card in my other Galaxy Note 2 and start it all over again. This stream has been glorious. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, please send that to me Beautiful. as soon as possible okay. because it needs to be on Twitter. That's wonderful. <laughs> I don't even get it, and it's wonderful. And that's wonderful. I do get it, and it's wonderful. I don't get that teapot, though. It's, it's interesting. It looks like a little anteater man. You're an anime man. Anime man. I'm, a, I'm an anime man. Anemone man. I'm an anime man. Anemone. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I kind of got my hair correct. Feels like so long ago. She's like, burn. He's like, okay. These are all great. <laughs> yes, this was a good stream. Um, but yeah, I, I should get out of my chair for a bit. And we should stuff ourselves with pasta. Let's have tasty pasta. Okay. It's what William Riker would want. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, next week I'll I'll try if my computer is set up to the degree that I can stream next week. Uh, I'll probably be streaming. Uh, but yeah, thanks for coming out as usual, and wasting some of your precious time that you will never get back on this. Not sorry, not sorry. 
Oh, Monty's here. Yay, Monty's here. That's, having a munch. That's on stream now. Wonderful. Yay. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to stop the stream. You guys are awesome, and we'll talk to you on the internets. Okay, love you, bye. We love you, bye. Have a wonderful afternoon.